All right, so we have folks from, yeah, all parts of the, around the globe. So, well, I think we'll get started here. Uh, I think we'll have a couple more people coming in, but so yeah, my name is uh, Michael Gustafson, Industry Strategy Manager with Autodesk. And I'm excited to have today this uh, webinar during AU with our industry partner, Idea Statica. And today's session, it'll be a webinar. We're gonna record this session. I just wanted to let you know that. And this, so we're gonna have a presentation here for about 40 minutes. And then if you have questions throughout the presentation, please ask them in the Q&A. So the question and answer box that you see in the Zoom interface. So I, yeah, introduce myself. We have Gernot German, our steel product manager with Autodesk and uh, Uri and Adam from Idea Statica as well. They can introduce themselves and we're gonna uh, kick things off uh, talking about, you know, why, why we're here and you know, we, we see steel connection design important. So what Idea Statica we're gonna be talking about today is, is centered around connection design. And we see connection design important, you know, for our customers for a number of reasons. It's really around three, air, three things happening in the industry that is making connection design important. And that's around, you know, project risk, uh, the demand for greater automation to speed, speed construction. And then the third is around sustainable design and, and thinking about embodied carbon. And I'm gonna talk about why, why this is. So firstly, around risk, we see project risk continuing to be an issue in the industry. And what this one white paper recently published by a bunch of North America engineering companies called Passing the Baton talks about this, the critical, criticalness of, of digital design handover between design and fabrication. And what it talks about is how project costs, that over 50% of project costs are for the owner is not about what they actually get as a deliverable, but is about managing risk and managing the predictability of the construction costs and, the, and what's built. And we think connection design, you know, is a part of that story on steel frame projects. So the more we can reduce risk in the design phase and reduce risk in the eyes of the fabricator, the better we can reduce that 50% uh, basically double the cost of what owners really should, uh, they're having to pay for. The second fact why connection design is important is around speed and the need for faster construction. In the U.S., there's a, uh, an initiative by the American Institute of Steel Construction, the double steel frame construction, uh, you know, erection fabrication uh, by 2025. So this is an, an aggressive goal that they think they can achieve and they're looking at several initiatives to achieve that. Things around, you know, the design space, the fabrication with the adoption of new automated technologies and you know, the fab shop, but also looking at new building materials. And we think, you know, connection design is an important part of this. And one initiative that they're working at is looking at optimizing the steel shape libraries. So this means identifying and, and, and really having the mills fabricate at, or to mill the most important shapes and actually reduce and get rid of the shapes that are less important. And they think doing this is gonna help speed up construction. But I see this will be very important with connection design because there's a very tight marriage you know, between optimizing connections and steel framing. So I think this, this initiative by AISC will be very much important for connection design. And then the third aspect is around embodied carbon. And we're seeing this really increasing in awareness with the structural engineering community. Think about total carbon that impacts climate change. There's two parts, there's embodied carbon and then there's operational carbon. And here you can see on the screen embodied carbon in yellow. This is the carbon that is you know, generated through the, through the creation of the materials and the fabrication and the erection during the construction costs. And these are, you know, done obviously at a fixed, uh, you know, a, a fixed amount of carbon during construction and then that maintains while operational carbon is more about the maintenance and the energy consumption during the operation. So a lot of focus from the structural engineering community is around that first part, the embodied carbon. I recommend you to download the, from the UK, the Institution of Structural Engineers document around how to calculate carbon. And there's a really nice white paper on the I struct D 
uh, web page uh, about how to set carbon targets with the structural carbon rating scheme. And it's really an ambitious goal that, but it's really required that by you know, 2030, uh, we want to be like net zero carbon on, on you know, the majority of projects uh, in order to mitigate the increase in global temperatures uh, by 1.5 degrees, that's like the goal. And these predictions of embodied carbon and reducing embodied carbon on structure, structural engineering is really critical. And the, so I would encourage you to research uh, this in more detail. And, and this is important too, when about thinking about connection design in terms of how do we rationalize and optimize the framing and the connections. And this white paper by Maude McDonald at, on the ice struck D, I thought was really interesting because it talks about the mindset, you know, that we've been trained for many years in the last, say, 20 years about, you know, uh, don't worry about weight, just bump up things to be more standardized size. It helps out the fabricator and the erector having standardization and simplification. But what that results in is a lot of overcapacity. You can see typical utilization ratios where, you know, framing systems are, are not within, say, the 80% to the 100% utility ratio. They're actually much lower than that. Whereas if we, new types of rationalization me methods are used to try to, you know, really best optimize out by the systems that you have available, we can really then reduce the weight and as a result also the embodied carbon. Because a lot of the embodied carbon is really generated from the materials and how they're generated, less so about the fabrication erection, erection costs, um, just proportionally. So I think this mindset shift, this is something that structural engineers need to be thinking about as a design, but also thinking about connection design. So a good example of this is a project, this was presented at AU last year by Mont McDonald with Idea Statica about the velodrome. They also talked about the Waterloo Station project, but how they're using Idea Statica with Autodesk Solutions to optimize steel framing uh, and the connections together. And you know, you can see a lot of different tools being used here and a lot of interoperability. And so what we see is that our investments from an Autodesk standpoint is to make it easier for firms like yourselves to use connection design tools, but plug it into the tools that you're using for analysis and for design and even detailing. And so this is where you've seen us investing in making Revit more, call it a higher level of LOD, level development, where we have now connection modeling at an LOD 350 level for you know, hundreds of different connection types, including custom connections. And this means now that your connection design workflows can be then connected into uh, the Revit environment to do your connection design and, and then be able to continue the process downstream with advanced steel for the steel detailing. We've also brought and made it easier for customers to leverage the uh, structural analysis toolkit that not comes out of the box in Revit where you can now visualize an analytical results coming back from analysis results, for example, from robot structural analysis. So this is important because we see that now, you know, the investments in Revit's connection modeling and also bringing analysis results into Revit makes it easier for our partners like Idea Statica to integrate their connection design solutions into ours. So, a quick recap of why, you know, why is connection design important? You can see these mega trends are important. And we're happy to have Idea Statica here today to talk about some of the latest integrations they're doing with Revit and Advanced Steel. So at this point, I'm gonna hand it over to you, Uri, to take, yeah, take it away. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thanks for the insights. This is Uri from Idea Statica. I'm uh, one of the managers of our team. Uh, we've been developing software for structural engineers for quite some time and working on the integration with the AEC collection of Autodesk also for quite some time. And we're very happy that we can share what it's already out there, but uh, also what we, what we want to do. All right. So hope you can see my screen. All right. All right. 
Uh, it's great to be an Autodesk uh, AC partner. Uh, it gives us access to uh, tools like Forge. We've created a, a cloud-based application for sharing projects, create DVGs uh, of uh, shared calculated connections in Idea Statica. And it, almost 15,000 of them are shared every quarter by 4,000 customers and uh, a lot more students and other enthusiasts. And uh, we really tried to, uh, to put the pieces together. And that means uh, creating the BIM links. And Revit, Robot, Structural Analysis, Advanced Deal are uh, the, the workflows most used. It depends on the, on the geo, but that's, that's our priority. And it's uh, uh, very easy to instruct engineer or optimize the connections because of either material savings or, uh, or carbon footprint. But then the engineer has to figure it out. And it's, it's, it's just not easy to figure out some of the connections. And uh, uh, we've, uh, we've done research about that. We keep asking structural engineers, how do your projects look these days in terms of connection design? So uh, from an average 100 connections, how many of them are the simple one, the moderate, and, and the complex? And the results are that almost a half are the simple, but the share of the of the moderate moderate and complex one is substantial and is growing. I think this is based on on answers from more than six hundred structural engineers. Uh, we will send the slides uh, uh, after the event, and then there's also a link for the full research in this. Second question was. Okay, uh, that's that's the uh, how many connections and type, and how long does it take you to do whatever is needed for that connection? Uh, that is to de design it, uh, either produce a sketch if you're a structural engineer, or or full detailing, generate output reports so you satisfy all the stakeholders, and that's pretty pretty quick for the simple connections, or well, jumping to 53 minutes on average for moderate connections. And 20% uh, of complex connections, they on average take over 200 minutes per piece. And this is consequences when we're talking about how to make the, the connection design better as uh, the so-called simple connections, it's only 45% of them. The, the big half is, uh, is uh, not simple. And it's not getting better. It's not going to happen that uh, that your customers will will start telling you, well, hey, let's let's simplify everything, and uh, we don't need to optimize, and it's it's fine. It's uh, the, the complexity is only rising, uh, usually with a, a expedited deadline as well. And the twenty percent of uh, of really the complex steel connections, when you do the math, they take on average 70% of the connection design time. That doesn't mean they uh, employ all the stakeholders, but somebody has to do the job. Somebody in the process has to spend that time and uh, one way or another that costs money as Mike uh, uh, illustrated, influencing the overall cost of the project. So that's why we uh, dedicated Idea Statica as a solution to connection design, uh, not replicating robot structural analysis, uh, but building on it and focus on, uh, on uh, connection design. And we can do a lot. Uh, Idea Statica can solve connections of all types of topologies, 2D, 3D frames, trusses, anchorings. Uh, loaded in uh, loaded in any direction and provide code checks sometimes it's very simple code check but very often you need buckling analysis right or there is you need to classify the connection uh, according to its rigid rigidity uh, the connection design is is getting more complex and having access to a tool that can do an overall check of the buildability according to a uh, selected code, whether it's AIC or Eurocode is critical. 
together with our uh, users, we've built a, a, a huge library of predefined uh, connections, uh, modeling templates. But you know what? It's 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 always faster and 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 better to use what you've already modeled, and uh, that's usually either uh, robot structural analysis, Revit advanced deal. So I I'm now in robot structural analysis. I've selected 15 connections, launched the idea static plugin. It automatically created 15 connection projects and saved them with my robot project. I will select one of them, review what I'm exporting, and uh, idea static will pop up. Uh, I can review the import geometry. As the connection is not detailed in this case, I will use the intelligent uh, connection templates uh, and connect these uh, uh, beams together. This is based on most common used um, modeling templates we see around the world. I have all the loading from a robot, so all I need to do is run the, run the code check. And in this case, everything is OK. So I, I have a very high degree of confidence that this connection can be built as, as it is designed. And I can prove it with a full design report. When I do this, I can go back and forth. Uh, I work with multiple connections. If something changes in, in uh, uh, the robot model, in this case, uh, Ideastatic updates that. I can quickly test uh, design options and validate them. If I'm a fabricator and I have my advanced steel model, I will launch uh, Ideastatica and uh, I'll just select all connections. Okay, so uh, Ideastatica automatically creates all the connection models right next to the advanced steel one. And let's open one of the connections, which is fully detailed. That's great saved a lot of time. Uh, what I don't have in this particular model is the internal forces. So let's put in uh, uh, through an Excel spreadsheet a set of internal forces, load the connection properly, and go check it. Again, the, the, the connection uh, passes the check. I can uh, examine its behavior and, and look for uh, optimization possibilities. At the end, I create a comprehensive ASC report. I can prove it to, to uh, my colleagues. I can prove it to all the stakeholders. And this is a tool that allows you to check all steel connections, keep the process in minutes, and embed it in your Autodesk workflow. And that works now, today, Everything you just saw, uh, if you just get our uh, trial version from, from the website, it just works like, like I've shown. But uh, we can now move on to what it might do in the future. What is the next step in the connection design? Next step in what we are looking into. And this is from now on, it's talk about the beta. From now on, it's, it's about what is not available to the public, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's a beta version. And it's a great pleasure that we can introduce and allow all of you to meet our Ideastatica checkbot, which is the next level integration and, and code checking engine for steel connections inside the AEC collection. All right, I got kicked out. Hope you can hear me, guys. Yep, we can hear you. Yep. yep. Yeah, you just have to reshare your screen. Thanks. Yep. That was close. All right, so everybody meet the idea static checkbot, a new way how to integrate and uh, deliver the connection design uh, faster. 
one of the limitations we, we hear from around the world, how can we calculate connections in batches? I need, need to calculate not just one by one, I want to calculate 20, 30, ideally 50, 200. So um, ideas that static checkbot can leverage the cloud to calculate connections in batches uh, and next to each other. We want to uh, integrate it better in uh, Revit advanced steel. So uh, you don't have to insert any other data if it's not absolutely necessary and just call the checkbot to, to provide the code checks. This is currently in uh, invite only beta. We'll explain it a little bit later. Uh, so also treat it like that. Uh, the public beta is, is planned for April next year. Imagine you're a structural engineer. You're in the initial phase of a project. You are uh, putting together the first Revit model. You are assessing design options. And you might, you might ponder about questions like what connections to use. What are the most problematic parts in, in the future structure? What is the rough budget and how can connection design influence that? So this is a scenario we want to address. We will firstly populate uh, connections in Revit, Revit using Dynamo, and then uh, we can let the checkbot to deal with a portion of them. Mike already uh, talked about the capabilities of uh, uh, the Revit connections. I have uh, slightly more. The Dynamo pl plugin uh, allows you. Oh, I'm sorry for that. I'm going to mute it. So we can use the Dynamo uh, templates and connections to fill the Revit nodes with modeled connections. And once we do that, there's a question how to, how to validate them, right? So I'm going to ask my colleague Adam to show us live what the checkbot can do. All right. Welcome from my side as well. I'm Adam. Uh, I'm a product engineer uh, within Idea Statica. I'm uh, one of the structural engineers in our sales and support department. And I'll show you right now a live demo of the uh, beta version of the checkbot. So you've just seen on the video, uh, Tomas, um, using the Revit Dynamo feature that would uh, just, you know, add all the connections and place on this kind of uh, steel hole structure. So I have this uh, particular model here, here open in, in Revit. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is to um, take the data and use them for the code check of uh, these connections. So I'm going to uh, zoom in a bit the structure, open the checkbot that's integrated into your uh, Revit. Uh, I'm not going to use all these connections from the whole uh, from the whole uh, structure uh, because of the uh, you know time consumptions uh, but I want to demonstrate this on the, on a couple of connections around here on this part of the structure so since I open the checkbot this is a very simple tool first what I have to do is choose the code uh, we're providing for now eight national codes uh, of course, European, American, and Canadian, so on. And uh, I can use one selection for one connection or a bulk, just simply drag the mouse, finish. Uh, here, this asks me if whether there are any welds missing, this algorithm can um, 
add them to the missing parts, but this model is very well designed. So there is no weld missing at all. So right now what's happening, it takes a couple of seconds. Um, these, all these data from Revit are now sent to the cloud server. There, these data are processed. Um, they are read and tra translated. And uh, from that, this assembly of this of this joint that you can see right here. This is already Idea Statica engine, and they are built up uh, on this uh, cloud server. And then these data are downloaded to your uh, computer to this checkbot tool. So that's why it takes a couple of seconds, but uh, it's not that long time. So what do you you have to do right now is to since you have loaded all the geometry and the design, you have to uh, input the loads. Uh, for now, uh, for this beta version right now, uh, you can use the simplified loading. Can, I can show you how it works. This is the um, tab of these members on this, on this joint. And I can load it with moments, shear force or normal force. So uh, this way, I can go through uh, all the connections. They get highlighted in the in the 3D screen of, uh, of Revit, and uh, I can just quickly, you know, as a demonstration, just go quickly through all of them and input something. Um, a means for the shear connections. I'm applying shear force here for this type of connection. I'm applying. Um, tension force and so on. Now I have set the the loadings and I can by one click start calculation of all these connections. Now what have I inputted? Uh, as a simplified loading, um, these arrows or symbols of the internal forces, they represent actually a percentage of capacity of the beam or column that I am loading. So percentage of normal capacity of a beam is applied on the on the connection. So this is the loads that I am uh, calculating. If I click here, to, I can open um, this joint. Uh, this detail in the browser and a tool that we call Idea Statica Viewer. Um, that's a open tool for everybody to for reviewing and studying the uh, design of Idea Statica um, files and projects. So here I can, uh, what I can do, I'll just switch to Imperial units since this project is under uh, American code. So if I click on this plate, for example, I can review the, uh, you know, uh, uh, the measures and so on, review the bolts. And what's the most important, uh, what's what I want to uh, demonstrate in here, you can review what is actually, you don't have to calculate it uh, at side, but you can just take a look here. What's this, what, what means these 10% of the shear capacity that I am applying here. That means for this uh, U uh, cross section, that's about 3.6 kips that I'm uh, applying for the calculation. So this is uh, the viewer. If I close this and go back, in the meantime, this uh, the analysis uh, is finished and this is it. Very simple uh, thing to use. What I'm reading right now is the um, overall results. Means this connection uh, passes the code checks uh, when I apply uh, the moment on the main beam. I can, of course, apply uh, 
combinations of uh, these internal forces. And all of that is uh, analyzed and checked. Um, so for me as a structure engineer or let's say a project leader, um, I've got this initial information. This structure uh, from the point of uh, connections is very well, or at least um, well designed. And I can immediately see um, I pass the code checks and uh, by uh, you know studying these uh, percentages, this is the usage of the capacity of the components like bolts, welds, and plates of the design connections. So I can see the I have a uh, quite big reserves, and in the uh, later stages of uh, the design and and so on, we can you know optimize these details, saving material and uh, saving costs and carbon as well. So this kind of answers very simply, very quickly, uh, questions like, is my structure constructible? Um, is there a space for optimization of the structure or the details? And of course, it helps me to shorten the time of the workflow. So that's, that's for the uh, Revit demonstration. And I'll jump to yes. a couple of slides here and give word to Yurai. Yep, Th thanks a lot, Adam. So you, you've quickly co-checked 10 connections from uh, Revit. Uh, this potentially has uh, no limits in terms of what workload can it handle. You all might uh, uh, understand that it's uh, it's a very hard thing to fine tune. So we're taking it step by step. Uh, and that was a nice scenario at the beginning of the uh, design process, right? The initial uh, pre-design phase. Let's fast forward to uh, the other end, to the actual uh, fabrication engineer who's responsible for putting all the connection design in check. He has multiple teams working on it in other countries. He has an has a advanced deal or, or Revit model with, with that level of development. And uh, he wants to check if everybody did their job. If all the connections might be hundreds of nodes, if they are uh, code compliant, if we didn't produce any clashes on the way, if uh, we can prove it that it's buildable and uh, sometimes as it is the last time uh, kind of push to uh, save some costs. So an option to find a better topology for groups of connections or at least some of them to save money. So uh, in this scenario, the checkbot can help as well. So uh, what can you do, Adam, in advanced deal? Right, it goes back to me. So now I'm, I'm virtually transformating from uh, a chief engineer of the project to uh, in few steps forward into a, a fabricator or detailer. Uh, this is another example, another project, um, such as steel hole. And up to me is to, you know, finalize um, the detailing, finalize the connection design. So um, again, I can help myself. I'll just zoom in. I'll concentrate on this part, on the first deck on the right side of the structure. Uh, here, I've got a couple of shear connections. So I'll focus on them. Of course, a checkboard is um, usable and valid for the whole structure at once. So just to you know save time, I'm not gonna 
calculate and analyze the whole structure or the connection from the whole structure. So in this scenario, I have already uh, prepared, uh, I've repeated the steps that you've seen uh, on the Revit model. That means I have selected as a bulk uh, uh, this uh, deck, uh, all these connections here. I have uh, applied the percentage uh, percent to loads and I have calculated and analyzed these connections getting these results in here. So I can what I can see here is that I have some well quite a lot of capacity left uh, for these bolts and welds when I um, uh, take a look at this uh, shear connection in here. So uh, there's a space for optimizing. So let's try. Let's see how uh, Checkbot can help me. So what I'll do, I'll just, you know, try the, let's say first iteration of the uh, optimization. That means I'll edit this uh, um, connection macro that is applied all over the structure, right? So if I change one of these, this one um, connection, uh, the changes applies uh, immediately to all the other connections and other decks and parts. So uh, here I've got uh, eight millimeters thick uh, plate. So let me change to six millimeters. Uh, these changes take place immediately. I can the same way uh, change the uh, size of bolts. Uh, here I have no no way to go lower. So just to demonstrate, I'll go uh, the other way around. Uh, so you can see the changes in here and in all the other, other connections. So I, if I go back to Checkbot, uh, I can synchronize this change by just one click uh, to all these connections in here. That means anything I change um, in the macro that I have just done um, is uploaded back to the server where uh, these changes are processed applied and sent back to um, a checkbot. Now, if I zoom in, uh, this is not very visible in this, uh, you know, it's a simple model, but I'll show you uh, in a second in the viewer in details. So the synchronization is finished and now second click uh, starts the analysis, the this calculation actually um, is not happening on your computer, but again, the data from Checkbot are sent to the server where for now there are 25 containers. That means um, if you see here 12 connections, uh, they are not uh, calculated one by one. Uh, but they are calculated uh, simultaneously. Uh, there's space for 25 of these, of such connections for now. And this is of course uh, going to uh, be uh, improved. The number will grow. But uh, as we mentioned, this is for now the, uh, the beta version. So uh, for the for the testers we've prepared this capacity. So we can see now um, these connection popping out. If I can see the results appearing, if I open one of these um, connections in the viewer, I wanna show you um, the changes 
in the design. Oh, I have to go back, switch to metric system because this project now is uh, under Europe, European code, under Euro code. So um, you can see the six millimeters of the end plate and 16 uh, millimeters of ball, bolt diameter. So um, again, analysis is done. I can quickly review the results. And you can see I have even more space for optimization and so on. So I can play even further. And this way I can optimize the structure um, very simply way. Now, if I jump a bit further in time, I have uh, finished my optimization. I have finished the project. Uh, and a couple of uh, weeks later, I get back some reviews and I um, get back some changes from the project leader who said, for example, these beams are not now going to be, uh, um, instead of IP270, they're going to be IP220. So um, now this is again uh, a thing on my side to prove and check that um, this connection as part of my design of my job will still work well. So I've done the change just in this one connection to show you that the synchro uh, function works uh, for just simple one connection as well. You don't have to do it as a bulk, but you know, in a quick way, just use it. So here you can see I've got this IP220 and here and I'll just recalculate and see whether even when I applied these changes, uh, my design is still uh, passing the code checks and so I can, you know, sleep well. Yep, so this is looking good. So that's... Uh, that's how the fabricators or detailers can use or take advantage of this new checkbot that we are providing. I have right now done, let's say, some kind of fine tuning uh, my details, optimizing them. And this way uh, I can save a lot of material, a lot of costs, and I'm at any moment, uh, one person, one hundred percent sure that uh, my details are constructible and buildable, and everything is fine. So that was it. Thanks, um, a, lot, Th thanks um, a lot for uh, for appealing and <laughs> great and brave live demonstration. <laughs> Most mm. welcome. <laughs> now I'm giving the uh, the presenter back to Uri, right? Yep. Thanks a lot. Okay. So it's it's great that that we uh, as engineers can have such a tool uh, to answer those tough questions in any any uh, uh, part of the process. To be safe, to have a possibility to optimize, and to coordinate. Uh, have a larger and more complex projects. Let's see what we have in the Q and A. Gernot, how is it? How is it looking like? Yes, we've got a question. Uh, I just throw them in. Uh, there was a question like uh, oh, that's you know, wrap up. In the word slides we have to be available at the presentation. Come again, you're breaking up for me a little bit. Yes. Second. Is it better now? Yes, I guess. Okay. So, will this will be available at the end of the presentation? Yeah, we're, so, we're, we're you're still breaking up, Gernot. Uh oh. Yeah, maybe we can. Uh, let's open up the. 
you know, could open that up too, right? Yeah, maybe we can, uh, what I suggest is, yeah, recapping some of the questions. I think the one that was asked that was good was, can you model the connections or add connection material in Idea Statica? Do you have to get the geometry from Revit or Advanced Steel? And it was good that was the response, it's both, uh, you said, right? That you can do some modeling on both the Idea Statica, just take across the framing members and forces and then just add the connection materials and design it in Idea Statica. That is correct. The, the scenarios in connection design, there's a myriad of them. And uh, sometimes uh, it, it makes all the sense to, to export everything from Revit because I have it already there. If for any reason I, I have a connection which is not modeled in Revit I, I, and I need to do it, or my colleague need to do it from scratch in Idea Statica, they can do it and leverage uh, one of the templates to do it quickly. Yep. That's good. And so another question that we get from firms I know is if, if you have three beams connecting three and let's say three connections coming together at a node. So not just two, but three. Does checkbox check them separately, or do they do them, you know, one by one, or how does that go? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, the safe approach. Is to is it to check them as one because they can influence each other, right? So if you run separate checks, you end up with a uh, with over uh, designed connections by default. So. Uh, Checkbot can can analyze the the node as a whole, and uh, that opens up a possibility to optimize and also to be hundred percent sure that if if that's if that's five beams in in one node that we still understand what is going on in the connection with all the eccentric eccentricities etc. Okay, so can you hear me now? better? Or not? Oh, yes. So. <laughs> Will the site be available at the end of the presentation? Yeah, it's, 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 mm, it's, sorry, Gernot, it's not better. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, that's that's fine, Gernot. We'll we'll take it from here. So, uh, a couple other questions. Your I, where is the, with this checkbox? Your checkbot. You're obviously using the cloud. Where's the data saved? What leaves your PC? Yeah, so all the all the project data are still saved uh, on your PC with your either Revit or Advanced Steel project. It creates a new folder and, and lines up individual connection files there. Uh, what is sent to the cloud is uh, uh, the, the data necessary for the, for the actual calculation. Uh, which are then returned uh, back to uh, your workstation and saved there. Makes sense. Okay. And then another question about the forces. I there was questions on that. How do you get the, the forces? And can you send information from the analytical model, like internal forces, to Checkbot? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Uh, we're, we're very, very close to it. We can get uh, all possible combinations, but we're still fine tuning it a little bit and it will be ready for the, for the April beta version. So we can grab uh, everything from Revit also from the analytical part. Yep, that makes, that makes sense. And so, and another question, who, who or what decides how fast the connections will be calculated? Yeah, it's, uh, uh, it's about the cloud capacity. So we'll actually create a virtual instance for uh, every user. And as we expand this, uh, we'll provide a um, cloud capacity to handle tens and potentially hundreds of connections uh, to uh, speed up what you do. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's all algorithmic based on uh, the expected capacity, uh, the, the, the volume of, of users we see requesting it and also the complexity of, uh, of the connections. We'll, we'll make sure that we don't send connections to the cloud that, that are 
uh, wrongly modeled, give you a tip that that it's it's good to to finish the modeling, check it before we run the calculations to be effective. Okay, well, good, good answers. And I know we have a mix of both. Uh, you know, some people maybe not familiar with uh, Idea Statica. And then those who are and who are looking forward to this more automation. One thing that I think Adam showed too is the calculation reports, and you showed it your eye in the video. So I think I wanted to confirm that there's calculation reports and, and that behind the scene that will be that are generated that you can look at. I know that's always important for engineers to get transparency into the calculations and the correct. 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 Yeah. Yes. The the design is code driven. It, it has to be. Uh, so that, that's why we produced a com comprehensive uh, report to prove that the connection is, is in line with code requirements. Very good. So other questions, anybody have any other questions, questions that have popped up because of our discussion? We open up the Q&A. Well, we answered them. A bunch yeah, of there, there's a question if if it is be available in desktop licenses uh, for no additional charge. Uh, this uh, will be uh, for our current customers available to 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 a certain amount. Uh, for now, it's uh, it's great for you to test it first. It's still maybe you will tell us that you you are not interested in such a service. Okay, that that's what, what this beta is for. And uh, uh, yes, primarily our customers uh, sh should decide if if we if we sh should uh, continue to 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 pursue this. Also, so one one good question about the optimization. Uh, if the checkboard will optimize the connections. As it is now, it it allows you to quickly go through various design options iteratively, uh, which is powerful enough. As uh, as we move on, it makes sense to to uh, create algorithms that would su suggest an optimal, whether it is bolt pattern, weld sizes, or thickness of plates. Uh, so we'll get there. The, the the optimization here uh, is not an easy one, but I think we we all agree that uh, that it it would be uh, a nice thing to do. Yeah, and I think that we see a lot of companies too doing optimization like at the framing level, and then maybe some high level ways of optimizing connection, you know you know, small, medium, heavy type connection. But I think that interaction between framing optimization and connection optimization most definitely yep. has warranted. So I look forward to, you know, how that, you know, maybe feedback from some of the customers too on how we do that. Yeah, uh, we are getting close to um, a another hour. So before you jump off and go to see other content, after this, we will send all the materials to your email addresses. That means that's mostly the presentation with uh, with the videos you saw. Uh, what you can do is, is two things. Uh, what we do now with current desktop version of Idea Statica that you can get at our website. And uh, in that email we will send you, we are going to ask you if you want to join the beta of the checkboard. It's an invite only. So uh, if you reply to us, yes, I want to, we will send you a, a special integration kit for your Revit or advanced deal, uh, allocate a testing instance to you and uh, also uh, one of our product engineers to, to help you testing and, uh, and go through it. And I encourage you to, to do it and uh, have some fun with uh, interesting amount of connections. All right. Very good. That's so, that for today. Yes, thank you. So thank we appreciate, yeah, Yura and Adam for giving this great presentation and, and for all of you on the call here to give us feedback. And we're excited to see you give us feedback further with the beta program. 
Uh, any other questions? There might be another couple questions here. We can uh, you're, uh, answer those or respond. Maybe even we'll stay online here just to answer these questions. But anyways, we appreciate everybody's time and thank you and have a good rest of Autodesk University. So thank you. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Great job. Thank you, guys.